for eliminating college debt. We're going to take care of this. And we can afford it. We're going to make sure you can wipe out your college debt as well. We give more help to racehorses than we do college students. Student debt should be forgiven for now. I'm going to eliminate a lot of your student debt if you, in fact, are, if you come from a family less than 125 grand and you went to a, a public university. I'm going to make sure that everybody in this generation gets $10,000 knocked off of their student debt as we try to get out of this god-awful pandemic. The next bill should forgive a minimum of $10,000 of student debt for everybody with a debt when they pass this bill. Just right off the bat, I'm going to cut the cost of education for everyone. I'm going to fight to make sure the student debt crisis, which disproportionately affects African Americans, we're going to immediately forgive now, immediately forgive now, and, and Nancy Amen. Pelosi put it in, $10,000 per person in any, any federal student loan. Forgive loans for any public college or a private HBCU graduate making less than a family making less than $125,000 a year. Forgive the loans, wipe them out completely. Fast forward to today, and he has failed to deliver on that promise that we just watched him make repeatedly on the campaign trail. Now, here's the latest update. As of February 2nd, courtesy of White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, quote, I don't have any additional executive orders to predict at this point in time, but if this resumes, Biden will continue working to ensure a smooth transition to repayment. In other words, he's not going to do jack shit about your student debt. Not even the bare minimum. The measly cancellation of $10,000 that he promised on the campaign trail. Not even going to do that. And let's be clear here. It's not just that he lied and he failed to deliver on his campaign promise. But now he's taking things a step further by giving student debt holders the finger once again. So as the Daily Post explains, despite increasing pressure to fulfill a campaign promise to forgive student debt, President Joe Biden is now going in the opposite direction. His administration has taken an initial step to try to overturn a key legal victory for borrowers, according to court filings reviewed by the Daily Poster. If the administration wins an appeal, it could bolster a legal precedent against millions of debtors being crushed by bankruptcy laws that Biden infamously helped his finance industry donors sculpt during his four decades in Washington. On January 14th, a federal judge in Biden's home state of Delaware moved to eliminate nearly $100,000 in student loan debt held by a 35-year-old epileptic man. In response, the Justice Department filed a notice of appeal in the case on behalf of Education Secretary Miguel Cardona. If Biden officials now follow through with the fully formed appeal, they would not only be aiming to keep this man overwhelmed with debt, but also moving to solidify a legal interpretation that could preclude even the most beleaguered student debt debtors from getting relief through bankruptcy courts. So thanks for that, Joe Biden. Thank you very much. Very kind of your administration to do this, to fight the cancellation of $100,000 of student debt from somebody who has epilepsy. How kind of you. How progressive of you. Now, you know, we hear about things like this while simultaneously hearing about how the Democratic Party is worried because they see headlines like this. This was published in Politico on December 1st. Biden's young voter problem. Polls show the president's approval rating has fallen sharply among a key component of the Democratic base, younger voters. This is from December 16th. Support for Biden among young Americans under 30 is slipping. This is from January 15th. Biden backers not seeing the results a year into his term. Now, the good news for Joe Biden is that there's one thing that he can do unilaterally, wherein he doesn't need the permission of Daddy Mansion and Mommy Cinema. He could do this himself, just with a stroke of a pen. He can cancel student debt, but he won't do that. Not going to do it. Not even going to do the bare minimum that he promised on the campaign trail of canceling a measly $10,000, which wouldn't make a meaningful difference to people who hold student debt, but it's something, but he won't even do that. I mean, it's bad enough that he is culpable in this current crisis. I mean, his bankruptcy bill made it nearly impossible to discharge student debt, and yet he refuses to right this wrong in any meaningful way. He won't even do the bare minimum. It's just, it's infuriating. This is exactly why Democrats lose elections. Even if we see a Republican party that is completely insane, they are literally explicitly undemocratic at this point, fighting against democracy, and Democrats still can't even beat them. 
It's because people don't feel as if there's any meaningful change each time they come out to vote for Democrats. So why would an average voter waste their time spending in line, uh, spending like two to three hours in line when they don't think there's going to be any meaningful difference in their lives? It's just going to be somebody who isn't as crazy. Why would they do that? This is why Democrats, the current iteration of Democrats, is one of the worst iterations of the party in, in modern American politics because they represent nothing. Their agenda is lackluster at best. Uh, it's not even able to accomplish their bare minimum milquetoast goals. And they're basically just seat warmers. They stop the bad guys from getting in power. But they're not good guys themselves. In fact, they're pretty bad themselves. But they don't do anything. So what happens? We keep see seeing this pendulum shift from Democrat to Republican Democrat to Republican, you know, after being reminded of how crazy the Republican Party is, everyone votes for Democrats again because they think, wow, dealing with that is just not acceptable. But then they realize, wow, well, my life isn't changing in any meaningful way after Democrat after Democrat has promised that it would. So I'm not voting. And then Republicans sweep again. And then the cycle continues, so on and so forth. People realize how crazy Republicans are. They go back into the arms of Democrats. Democrats have to change nothing. And it's just, it's, you know, it's really unfortunate. I actually don't think that Biden wants to hang on to both branches of Congress. And this is all speculation on my part. So feel free to dismiss what I'm saying as nothing more than cynicism. But I think he would absolutely love to lose one branch of Congress. So all of the pressure to deliver goes away. But the problem for him is that the pressure is just going to grow if this is indeed what he believes. I think a lot of Democrats will feel relief because if they don't hang on to the House or the Senate, then there's no expectation. But for Biden, the expectations will grow for him at least if he loses one branch of Congress, if not both, for him to deliver with executive action. But he still won't do that. Even when conservative members of his own party, like Chuck Schumer, is saying, hey, I don't support canceling all of it, but at least cancel 50,000, and Biden won't even listen to him, what hope is there? I mean, if Biden does indeed choose to run for re-election in 2024, what is he going to pitch to voters? I'm not Donald Trump. It worked in 2020, given the circumstances, given the start of the pandemic and how Trump botched it. But now Biden isn't doing anything to rein in the spread of COVID-19. He's just letting it rip. So what is he going to tell voters? I mean, throughout the first year of his presidency, he can brag about cutting childhood poverty nearly in half with the child tax credit. But that expired because people in his own party killed his legislative agenda and he hasn't ex exerted a minimal amount of public pressure on them. So what is he going to say? How are future Democrats going to prove to people that they're going to fight when time after time we keep getting these promises and it's almost an inevitability that they're not going to deliver. See, this isn't just about Joe Biden. This is about the Democratic Party. This is a microcosm of a bigger issue. Democrat after Democrat makes promises. They fail to deliver and then they get wiped out. And then Republicans come in and do a bunch of horrible things. And at best, we get some of those policies reversed. But not always. So it's this sort of ratchet effect, right? Where the Republican Party will continue to shift the party to the right. And Democrats... They won't try to shift the party back to the left. They won't even undo all of the harmful things. I mean, Biden is still using Trump's Title 42, I believe it's called, to deport immigrants, basically using the pandemic as a justification to not even allow people to apply legally for asylum in the United States. This is a violation of not just international law, but U.S. law. But Biden didn't undo that. He's keeping the same disgustingly fascistic immigration system intact. So Democrats... If they cared, they'd put pressure on Biden. They'd fight, but they're not doing that. So it tells me they don't care. A lot of Democrats probably are eagerly awaiting their defeat in November because that means the pressure goes away. And the few Democrats in Congress, the handful that actually care, members of the squad, progressives, I mean, half of them don't even know what strategy to utilize. And the other half, they actually do care, but they're not enough in Congress to really make a meaningful difference. So we're we're stuck in this situation where the future looks so bleak and all we can basically look forward to is the situation to further deteriorate. And that's really sad, but that's the reality of the situation. And, you know, 
Democrats don't care. Joe Biden doesn't care. Not shocking, but still very demoralizing to see. Come on, man.